Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Can we stand today? Amen. Who's come ready to worship God? Amen. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to church. Amen. Sunday church. Amen. We're ready. We're alive. We're awake. I don't know about the awake part, but we will get there. Amen. But I just want to read just a couple uh, verses. It's Psalms 150, one of the most known verses in the Bible. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now I know we all walked in here so I know everybody is breathing. That means we all should be praising the Lord. Amen. I am encouraging you today to praise God for what he has done, for his mighty acts, for how great he is, for all the power he has that he has given us for freedom over our sin through his blood. Amen. So let us praise God today. Lord, we worship you today. We praise, Lord. We have come, Lord. We have come to lift you up. We have come to magnify you, God. For you're the one that sits on the throne. You're the one, Lord, that reigns forever and ever, Lord. You, Lord, have the victory, Lord, over death, hell, and the grave. We worship you today. We magnify you today, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship God today. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus, Lord, can't nobody do me like the Lord, can't nobody do me like Jesus, Lord, he's my friend. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus, Lord, can't
worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is powerful, God. You are holy, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus 
some prayer requests right now. We're continuing to pray for Salem, Oregon. God's moving. To us, it might be a little too slow, but God is moving in his own way. And it will make sense someday. But we just got to keep walking in faith, not by sight, because this world doesn't look good right now. But it's by faith we walk, not by sight. Amen, amen. Praying for what God wants to do with this church, that his will would be done. I, we have our own visions, have our own dreams of what we want, but God's like, I have a better one. I know what I'm doing. We had an interpretation of tongues. He's like, God's like, I know what I'm doing. Amen. I want to pray for the United States of America. It's not looking good. It is not. But if Abraham could talk with God to save Sodom and Gomorrah for just 10 souls, that's only one man. But why did he do it? Because he had, he, had he had a nephew 
He had somebody in there that he loved, that he wanted to not be destroyed. If there was a, if that, if that only took one man of God, what would it take for his church in right now in America to pray that same prayer? Say, God, do not destroy, Lord. Oh, Lord, let there still be more time, Lord, for you to move in this nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing that God cannot do. Amen, amen. Amen. Same thing with Jonah. With Nineveh, God was going to destroy it. But the moment the people heard the word and they turned their ways, look what God did. Look what God did. So right now I am asking for you to get a burden, to get a burden for America. I know you have it. I know we all have it, but just praying to dig a little deeper like Abraham must have felt when God said, hey, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know what went through his mind, what went through his heart. It must have been racing. He's like, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. I got someone there, I got someone there. You can't destroy it, God. Let there be just like 40 souls, 30 souls, 20 souls, 10 souls. I don't know how, what patience God has for us, for him to continue to move even when it looks the darkest, even when it does not look right. But there was something in Abraham that said, no, do not do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to go to prayer right now. If you need prayer, you can come up to the front. We will anoint and pray for God to touch you, for you to be healed, for you for to be blessed. Whatever you need, you can come up to the front. We will ask, believe, and pray, and God will do it. Amen. But right now, I ask you that we would just turn our eyes and turn our voices, turn our hands up. Lift up your hands to God right now. Just begin to pray. Oh, Jesus, we come before you. Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your victory. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us, God. We thank you for it. We praise you for it, God. Oh, Jesus, we ask you that, Lord, you would continue, Lord, to touch Salem, Oregon, God. Oh, Lord, you are moving, God. And we believe it. We are taking every step in faith that what you are doing, God. We pray for it, that you would come, Lord, that you would move soon, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh Lord, let your spirit fall in Salem, Oregon, Jesus. Oh Lord, let it fall, let it spread, Lord. Oh Lord, let it spread out to the cities around us, God. Touching those souls that are lost in this world. Jesus in your name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, we ask you, Lord, to touch America. Touch, Lord, the United States of America, God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, turn, her, turn this nation back to you, God. Oh, Lord, turn this nation back to you. Oh, Lord, turn this nation back to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh Lord, touch this nation again, Lord. Oh, Lord, let your revival spread in this great nation, Lord. That, Lord, you set up. Yes, in the name of Jesus, let it be so. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's worship God right now. Oh, let's lift up our hands. Let's clap our hands before our God. Oh, what he is doing. What he is going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you may be seated right now. As Brother Chantry is coming to give us the announcements for this month.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. The spring uh, is upon us, theoretically. I don't believe it, but it's supposed to be here. And the events are starting to come fast and furious now. So uh, next Thursday at 7 o'clock is prayer, 730 Bible study. Amen. Please come to that. And then next Sunday at 2 o'clock is 2.30. And Brother Plemons will be with us. So please invite somebody. Let somebody get the Holy Ghost next week. Amen. And then uh, April the 27th through the 29th is going to be marriage retreat. And that's going to be done by uh, Brother and Sister Payne. There's more information to the back. Amen. And then men's conference which is going to be May 11th through the uh, 13th, I believe. I was right, as always. Anyway. Uh, to the 13th, uh, it's $65. Uh, after May 1st, it's going to be $75. And if you have any, want any more questions, there's paper or there's uh, pamphlets to the back. Amen. And that's all for now. There is much more coming down the pipeline. Amen. Let's stand. Uh, to give the offering. Amen. And let's uh, pray for. Let's pray for this offering. Dear Lord Jesus, God, bless the people that give. Bless them a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's march. Is the mighty God is Jesus the Prince of Peace to be. might say what's so important about it being all in him when you begin to understand that God the creating God the God that spoke the world into existence and yes the God that allowed you to be here today that same God manifested himself in flesh amen and came and took on flesh that he might understand that he might go and take that flesh and lay it down at an old rugged cross, and through the death, burial, and resurrection of that flesh, he would give you power to overcome sin. Amen. He did all that. Why? Because God so loved. That's what love does. 
Love is not just a feeling, but love is an action. Amen. And Jesus is the action of God's love toward us. Amen. Praise God. He did not create a being, amen, that would bleed and die, but he took on a being that would bleed and die. Amen. It shows you the great love wherein he has loved us. Amen. And that's why we sing that song, because it reminds us, amen, that he loved us, that he loves us. Amen. So as we go through life, we know that God loves us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, enough for, amen, that lesson for today. But if you have your Bibles, and turn with me to Acts, the 11th chapter. We're going to have a little bit of a lengthy reading today. So stay in the saddle. Amen. Don't jump off. Amen. We'll get down through this reading, and then you will be able to sit down. Amen. But amen, if you'll just stand for the reading here, if you can. If you're able to, amen, praise God, amen. Acts 11, 15 through 26. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. This is Peter, last, not last week, because last week we had Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, however you want to look at it. We preached about Jesus, but amen. But the week before that, we talked about when Peter came to Cornelius' house, the, the Gentile, and God filled them with the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak in other tongues as they, uh, as the Spirit, amen, filled their life, amen. Well, now he's going back to Jerusalem and having to give a report of what took place because they're wanting to know. And so he's telling them, and as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. The same Spirit fell on them that fell upon us on the day of Pentecost. Then remembered I, the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us. It's the same thing that happened to us as happening to them. Amen. It's the same thing. Who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I should withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then have God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. And I'm going to tell you, amen, this is for whomsoever will. The Jesus name, amen, baptism, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in another tongue, is for whomsoever will. If it hasn't happened to you yet, I said yet, it will. If you'll sincerely seek after God, God will fill you with his spirit. And you will have that same experience as they did. Amen. Praise God. That's the reason why today New Life, United Pentecostal Church, doesn't go back to 325 A.D. It goes back, amen, to 33 A.D. where the Holy Ghost fell. Because we believe in the same experience that they have, you can have. Praise God. Amen. You too, amen, can speak in other tongues. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it won't happen. That just means if you'll continue to seek after God, God will do it. Praise God. Now when they, then, now they, which, verse 19, were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia and, and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but, on, but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians. Just a second. What's Grecians? They are Greek-speaking Jews. That's what Grecians are. Okay? Greek-speaking. In other words, their language was Greek, not Hebrew. Okay? Preaching the word, pre preaching the Lord Jesus, and the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Okay, you don't have to, yeah, but uh, jumping down to, to verse 25 and 26. Then departed Barnabas to, to Sarsis, Tarsus, excuse me, for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they were assembled to themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. I want to preach with the help of the Lord, and if you'll help me preach, amen, by saying amen, amen. If you, uh, 
agree with what I have to say, amen. Now, if you don't agree, then we can talk, amen, praise God, amen. But if you agree, that's what you mean. When you say amen, that's what it means. I agree, amen, so be it, amen. And so with that, amen, with your help, amen, we want to preach today from the title, Win the Day. Win the Day. Lord, we love you today. We magnify your name today. We exalt you today. Help us to deliver your word to your precious people today. Those that are here in person, those that are online, may your word reach them. May your spirit speak to them. God, may we be quickened in this hour by your spirit to seek after you, that we might see the greatness of God revealed to this generation. Thank you for all the other generations you have revealed yourself to, but we're praying and seeking that you will reveal yourself to this generation, this modern day generation that thinks that there is no God. Reveal your power, your glory, your grace, your mercy, to the love, your love to them in this hour, we pray. In Jesus' name, we give you the praise. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. You may be seated. Win the day. Now, I don't mean to divide the church because that's not proper. But uh, so please don't let this divide us. But the phrase win the day to you that are very, very much followers of the University of Oregon will probably recognize that phrase because in 2009, Coach Chip amen, made that their motto that year, and they did very well in 2009, win the day. And so that, uh, if you were a Duck fan, there you go. Hey, all right, I didn't hear, oh, the, I finally heard, I was waiting to hear that, amen. All right, now finally it came, amen, um, win the day. But if you go back, it actually goes back further than just Coach Chip's day, but it goes back to the time when battles were fought. Now today, when they fight, they fight during the day and night. But at one time, battles were mainly fought during the day. And the whole goal of that day was to win the day. If we can just win today, and then tomorrow, have the same frame of mind, win that day, we begin to string this day to the next day, and, to the ne and then we will win the battle. And if we win the battle, then you know what? If we'll start stringing those together, win this battle and this battle and this battle, then we will what? Win the war. Now, whether we like it or not, and whether you like it or not, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know that I always like it. But you're in a battle. When you were born into earth, on, on planet earth, you were born into a battle. And, 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 the, and the battles raised ever since the day you were born. There has been a battle over your soul. The enemy, and we call him the enemy, the devil, has done it, is doing everything he can to win you over to him. At the same time, God's done, doing everything he can to have you come his way. You're in a battle. You're in a battle. And if you have chosen today, and I hope you have, I hope everybody here, and I hope everybody out there, and I hope everybody that we come in contact wants to live for God. I hope that's your choice. Because if your choice is not to live for God, there's not much I can say today or preach about that's going to help change your, your, your mindset. Because if you've chosen to live for the devil, there's not much I can do, amen, for you, amen, until you have a change of heart. But if you have decided today that you want to live for God, that you want to follow and serve God, that you recognize the fact that, that the best way to live life is in service to God because he does the best things. His blessings make us rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. That's what the Bible says. Amen. And I have found that to be true. Amen. If I want that in my life, then I'm going to have to know that I'm going to have to battle. And the way I approach that is by winning the day. Winning each day. Day after day, win the day. The followers of Jesus understood this. They remembered a time in the life of Christ when he must needs go through Samaria. He felt unction of the Holy Spirit to lead him through Samaria. And, and I don't have time to break it all down, but just to let you know, usually the Jews would do everything they could to, 
go around Samaria because Samaria was considered a, a place of uncleanness. And so they would do everything they could to go around that area. But Jesus felt that he needed to go through there. And so he and his disciples made their way through the little land or country called Samaria to a place called Jacob's Well. And it was there that he began to minister to a woman that we know, not her name, but just know her as the woman at the well. The disciples went on into, into the city to find food, and while they're gone, Jesus begins to witness to this woman at the well, W-U-E-L-L. Okay, don't want you to get mixed up with W-H-A-L-E, okay? W-E-L-L. He was there. This is a place where they would get water out of the well, all right? And so Jesus is ministering to the, her and speaking to her, and, and, and he ministers to her, and she has a life change, and, and she recognizes him as the Messiah. She runs on into the city, tells, hey, come see this man uh, 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 that, that's told me everything about my life, and truly, surely, he's the Messiah, and the city comes out, and they recognize Jesus, and they become followers of Jesus, and they want to serve Jesus, and Jesus sends them back into the city and says, no, I don't want you to follow me now. Just go and tell everybody amen and, and witness to everybody, and, and later on, if you follow uh, the preach in the last few months, I preached uh, the rest of the story. We get to hear the rest of that story of Jesus at the well later on in Acts 8 when the Holy Ghost is poured out and they get baptized in his name and there's a great revival. That all started with Jesus must needs go through Samaria. All right? But they learned something from that. The followers of Jesus learned something because they remembered something that he said. And he said, in John 4, 35, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they, they are white already to harvest. In other words, right now is the day of harvest. Right now is the moment. Right now is the day, amen, that you need to win because there are people that need to know Jesus Christ. And, and I, I want to preach to you today and declare to you, right now we are in harvest time. Right now is that day, that moment, and we must win this day. We must win this moment. We must win this opportunity, amen, because God is moving. God is speaking. God is touching lives in your family, in your in your. Uh, 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 your workplace, uh, God stirring them up. Uh, why? Because this is the day that the Lord has created for the church to win. We must win this moment. Uh, we can't uh, become a distracted. There's the word. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes the Holy Ghost helps me and sometimes he leaves me on my own. Amen. Distracted. Amen. We can't afford to be distracted in this hour. Amen. We've got to win this day. We got to win this moment. I'm preaching to a church in Oregon. I know, amen, where we, where we live. I follow the news, but I'm telling you through the Holy Ghost, I believe there's a wind coming. There's a movement coming. There's a flow coming. There's an anointing coming. There's a blessing coming. The Spirit of God is going to begin to flow again in Oregon, and we must be ready to win the day, to win the day. How do we win the day? Three things that we must do to win the day. Number one, prayer. Calling upon God for help. The Bible declares to us in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Uh, Brother Caleb, you weren't too far off uh, with what the Holy Ghost wants to stir this church up with. Uh, amen. We have got to, amen, to understand, uh, amen, that there are people out there that have to be reached, and the way they're going to be reached is through us praying with a passion and a burden. God, give me a passion and a burden to pray for the people I know. Because the Bible says that when we pray and seek the face of God and turn from our wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is a promise God gave, amen, to the result, uh, as a result to the prayer of Solomon at the dedication of the temple, amen. God let them know, hey, if you'll pray and seek my face, 
then I will hear. Then I will hear. We've got Amen. To seize the moment. We have got to seize the day. We have got to seize this opportunity today through prayer. It ain't time to pray less. It's time to pray more. Jesus told us, amen, in, in describing how to pray, give us this day our daily bread. That this is the day. This is the opportunity. This is the moment for revival. This is the moment for regeneration. This is the moment for hope for your, for your loved ones. This is the day. This is the day. Psalms tells us we're talking about praying. How can we seize the moment? How can we win the day? By prayer. The writer in Psalms 34 writes this. The righteous cry, Psalms 34, 17 through 19. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Right now, I could just stop and go home. Because that right there, that right there should be enough to get you to pray. Because the Bible says, when the righteous cry, the Lord hears them, but he doesn't stop there. I'm glad he hears, but I know a lot of people that hear and do nothing. God don't just hear today, but the Bible says he delivers them out of all. Someday I may just preach a message just on that three-letter word, all. Amen, because it's powerful. All their troubles, not one or two. Well, if God can just help me with this problem and that problem, I'll just endure this problem. That's not what that Bible says. He says all their troubles, all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But here we go. But the Lord... Delivereth him out of them all. Praise God. I'll praise him if you won't. Thank God. He delivers them out of all my problems, all my struggles, all my afflictions. Amen. Some of you have been afflicted, oppressed. The devil doesn't sleep that I know of. In fact, during sleep is probably when he's most active, it seems like. He doesn't like the daylight for some reason. Well, I got Bible to show you why he doesn't like the day. But he likes to work at night. And he oppresses the people of God. He's not out there oppressing some, somebody that's already serving him. He's oppressing you and me. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. So if you're being afflicted today, welcome. You're righteous, praise God. Hallelujah, amen. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth them out of all their, amen. Out, uh, I got, I've got verse 17, verse 19. But the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Somebody needs to start thanking God. I feel afflicted. You know what? I've got a victory coming then. I feel affliction. You know what? I've got, I, I've got a, a, a praise report coming because God promised me victory. God promised me deliverance. God promised me it, and I'm going to stand on his word today. Amen. And I'm not going to let my eyes get on, on the affliction. I'm going to keep my eyes on the victory. Amen. On the glory, on the promises of God. Amen. Praise God. Win the day. How do I win the day? Prayer. How do I win the day? By understanding what my prayer does. It. God hears me and delivers me out of my prayer, out of my bondage, out of my disappointment. Praise God. Amen. God delivers me. Amen. Praise God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. When you're praying, remember, amen, one day, amen, just win the day. Just win the day. There's an old song my mom used to sing, kind of jumped on my mind, and, and I, I don't know, this might be a stretch putting it in this, in this message, and maybe it's just because I'm missing mom, amen. So if you just don't mind me for a moment, but this is one of the first songs I ever l remember my mom singing. And, and it, the words, and I'm 
reading the second verse, not the first one, went like this. Do you remember when you walked among men? Well, Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, it's worse now than then. Cheating and stealing, violence and crime. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Just win the day. Just win the day. Just pray. That's why prayer, daily prayer is so important. Why? Because I'm praying so I can just win this day. This one day at a time. The second thing we do to win the day, prayer is first, second is praise. Rejoicing in the knowledge that God is in control of this day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Praising God is a way to win the day. Understanding that it, this day was made by God. And therefore, God is in control of this day. Psalms 118, verses 21 through 24, read this. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. What an attitude. Amen. What a different look, uh, viewpoint. Uh, amen. That we need to have in this hour. Amen. Don't get your eyes on the darkness. Uh, don't get your eyes on the depression. Don't get your eyes, amen, on all that. Uh, but get your eyes on the one that made the day. Uh, the one that created the day. Uh, the one that's in control of the day. Uh, amen. Because the Lord is doing a marvelous thing. Uh, God is doing a marvelous thing even in our day today. Amen. And because of that, I can worship him. Because of that, I can praise him. As Brother Caleb said earlier, amen, everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Amen. That means if you're breathing today, then you need to thank God for breath in your body. You need to thank God, amen, for salvation for your soul. You need to thank God, amen, for a future that's planned by his hand and by his wisdom. Amen. That's why I rejoice in this day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We need to recognize that. But we don't. We, we, we look at all the negative that's going on. And there's plenty, as Brother Flocker said. There's plenty. But I choose not to look at it. Do I have to record it? Do I have to? Sometimes, yeah, we got to talk about, I know, we got to discuss the news to a point. But if that ever gets beyond to where you're, you're, you're just full of, frustration and, and, and depression and, 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 and all you can see is negative and oh my we're just going to blow up huh? amen then you need to get away from the news get your eyes on the book greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world nay in all these things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us huh? amen I can do all things through Christ huh? amen that means I can go through anything amen praise God for he's the one in fact, David would say, amen, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall, praise God. Amen, there's nothing that can stop the child of God in this hour. If we got our mind right, if we got our attitude right, if we got our spirit right, there's nothing that will be withholding from us because God desires to give his people good things, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Does God want to put into your life blessing upon blessing because he's a good God. That's why I rejoice. Amen, I don't rejoice today day by how I feel because if that was the case I wouldn't have even made it to church today you think sometimes you think pastors never have a bad day I got news for you I'm as human as you are I've been busy 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 the last month but you know what when I begin to think of the goodness of the Lord when I begin to think of how he saved me how he picked me up, how he turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, 
There's a joy that begins to spring up in my spirit that I've got to get to the house of God so that I can magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And when the praise team begins to praise him, amen, and his spirit begins to filter into this room, something gets into my spirit saying, hey, buddy, you can do it. Hey, you can make it. Hey, we can live another day. Hey, I can win this day. Hey, I can win this moment because greater is he. He's in me. Amen. He's leading me and he's keeping me. Therefore, I can praise him and magnify him and exalt his name praise God praise God praise God if you're having a bad moment praise him if you got some bad news begin to praise him Job got bad news family was destroyed everything he owned was taken from him what did he do he began to praise God anyhow oh that's that, that, that that's just that's just crazy, no, that's biblical. Because God knows how your body works. And he knows that when you get bad news, if you can just take a moment and begin to praise him, that brings his spirit into your situation. Does it necessarily take away? Amen, no, the kids didn't come back that day. His flocks didn't come back to him that day. In fact, we don't know how long he was in that state. But he praised God anyhow. As a witness to us in this hour, no matter how you feel, praise God. Worship God. That's a re- And really, we're blessed today, more than Job. Because if you want, there, there's so many venues, and don't, you know, talk to Sister, I mean, don't, yes, talk to Sister Star or, or Sister Hannah. Amen. If you, if you want music, because music can be used to worship God. That book of Psalms. You know, what, you, know, you know what really that is? The song book of David and the Jewish people. That's what they did when they had bad times. They turned to that book. called We call it Psalms. And they would read one. And actually they had music to go with it. And they'd begin to dance before the presence of God. Why? Not because they felt like it, but because they understood. That's how God responds. That's how I get a response from God. It's by my worship to him and my praise to him. And he inhabits that. Amen. It comes down and it changes my outlook. Amen. So praise is vitally important. And the right kind of music is vitally important. We need music that praises God and worships God. Amen. And today you have access to that through the through the Internet and, and in different ways. Amen. And if you need more information, amen, there's there's others here. Amen. That can help you. Amen. With that. But I just feel encouraged in this message to tell you, you've got to learn to praise him. And if you can't with your own voice, then you need to get, amen, some backup music, amen. That helps you, amen. And I don't know how many times that uh, uh, in my little truck as I'm at work, amen, I turn on some good Christian worship music, amen. My whole attitude changes. My whole outlook. You know, it's not so bad. It's raining and everybody and their brother and aunt and uncle is putting out garbage for me to pick up. But other than that, praise God, God's still on the throne. Amen. Amen. Praise him. The third thing that I want to leave you with, probably left the last one for, because it's a little, a little more difficult. Prayer, prayer to me, uh, you know, as you, as you grow in God, you'll learn prayer is not as hard as you think it is. Praising God is not really as hard as you think it is. But this one, this one takes a little time, and that's patience. Learning to trust in God's timing. Win the day. Learning to trust in God's timing. When the day is right, when the moment is right. James tells us, and boy, it got quiet, didn't it? This one word can change the whole direction of my message. Lord, I don't understand that, but here we go. James tells us in James 1, 2 through 4, My brother counted all joy, and you shall fall into diverse temptations. Boy, I don't got time to preach on that today, but boy, that's a tough one. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. But let patience have her perfect work, complete work. That you may be complete and entire, wanting or needing nothing. Winning the day through patience in God. 
The Bible tells us in Isaiah, Hast thou not known, in Isaiah 40, verse 28, Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. The, the, sometimes we need to re be reminded in our patience and waiting for God and how to win the day. We've got to realize that God is still everlasting. God is still the creator of the ends of the earth. God never faints. God's not work, weary. And there is no searching or th there is no, nobody can find the, the end of his understanding. He goes on to say in Isaiah 40, 29, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Now as I preach this message and I'm wondering, God, why are you wanting to talk about patience and winning the day? Because uh, uh, um, I've just told you, you win one day and you link that to another day, win that day. And that, that's kind of the idea. But, but uh, God wants us to understand some days, amen, you just got to be patient. I wish there was healing that would just flow, just walk into this room and healing would flow in your body. And you'd leave here completely healed. But sometimes it don't work that way. You got to wait. I wish total deliverance would take place. But some days you got to wait. Sometimes you just got to be patient with God. Sometimes you just got to, 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 to hold yourself together by faith and say, you know what? I'm trusting God. To me, and I, I'm not here and, and trying to change anybody's theology, but, but to me, patience is basically learning to trust God day in and day out. Waiting on God, knowing that when God moves, things can happen, and, and they can happen Quickly when God moves. But prior to that day is usually some days of patience. Some days realizing, amen, that God's not left you, God's not on a part, but God has his own timing and his own, uh, own moment. Amen. And so, so you got to wait. you got to be patient with God. There was a phrase, and I kind of uh, uh, used it a little bit here, but, but one, when you talk about when the day that's very popular, and it's called carpe diem. And as I looked at this word carpe diem, in my understanding, it was seize the day. But as I studied that a little deeper, I found that, there's a, that seize the day is not really the accurate definition of carpe diem. Latin scholar Maria Marci Marcielio says the proper, the proper definition or the, the accurate definition of carpe diem is plucking the day. Meaning to pluck or gather the ripened fruit or flowers. Understanding then that you have to wait to the right moment. You can't just seize the day. You got to for, wait for the right day to seize. Because you've got to wait for the flowers to be ripe. You can't just go out. If I went out right now and plucked my tulips, I would have nothing but greenery because there's no tulip there yet. And what would happen is I would destroy the tulip. And I'd never get a tulip this year if I went and picked all my tulips. I've got to wait for them to have the right day that they are, that they are uh, uh, ready, that, 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 that they have reached that moment. If you go out, and I don't have them yet, but if you went out to your tomato plant right now, unless you've got a greenhouse and you begin to pluck off limbs off that tomato plant, you're going to kill it because it's not the right day. It's not the right moment. So when we talk about uh, carpe diem, we have to be patient for that right moment. But the, the, the flip side of that is too also. And this is where they get seized the day. Because if you don't, I mean, but when the day is right and you don't pick them that day, then what's going to happen? They're going to spoil on the vine. There's a time when my tulips are going to be beautiful, going to be gorgeous, and then there's a time they're going to die. And that time when they're dead is not the time to pick them. You just missed out on it. 
So that's the reason why, church, I've come to, to you about talking to you about winning the day. We must understand when the day is right. We must understand when the moment is right. How can we know when the moment is right? Amen. That that day that they're, they're ripe and, and, and they're luscious and, and it's the perfect moment to, to, to seize or, or, or pick them or, or, or harvest the, the, the fruit. We have to know when that day is. And the only one that knows when that day is, is God. Is God. Patience is needed with knowledge. Our patience, God's knowledge, is how we're going to win the day. It's how we're going to win the moment. This, this is going to be how we are going to see revival. Amen. In this hour. Amen. Is when we are so in tune with God that we know that God reveals to us when that moment is right. There are people you're praying for right now that if you went to them and God in, get, get into their life, amen, and tried to get them to come to church, they're going to repel you. They're going to resist you. They're going to walk away from you, and you're going to shatter the moment that God's preparing their soul for. So that's why I'm telling you right now, you've got to have some patience, amen, when we're talking about winning the day. Thank God for prayer. Thank God for praise. And we need those, and you need to operate in those. But you also have to have patience amen and understand that the right moment is going to be there and when that right moment is then you better act when that right moment is you better be ready amen and how do i prepare for that through prayer and through praising god and being in tune with god so church as you stand with me today win the day carpe diem seize the moment all that is so wonderfully true but I feel like coming to this church today, and I, I've totally thrown a curveball at my dear wife, but she's a great baseball hitter. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Because what I feel in the Holy Ghost today is I need to help somebody with some patience. You're like, well, if God's God, why hasn't it happened already? If God's as big as you say he is, then why am I struggling with what I'm struggling with? If God is so powerful and the creator like you preach, pastor, preacher, Brother David likes to call me, amen. Preacher, then why don't I have my deliverance? Why don't I have my, why, why aren't my kids back in church? Why aren't uh, my family members back uh, coming to church? with? Why aren't my neighbors? Carpe diem. Carpe diem. You got to be patient. God has that moment. God knows what he's doing. God's fully aware of what he's doing. And God is doing it. God is working. But don't get out of step. Don't get out of step with what God is wanting to do in your life. on the Lord for they that wait on the Lord shall be renewed with strength how do I wait on the Lord how do I I already told you prayer and praise prayer and praise those are the things we do as we're waiting patiently on the move of God but I'm going to also say amen there is going to come a day Harvest time is going to be ripe. Amen. The fields are going to be white all ready to harvest. Why did Jesus come in and, and minister to that little woman at the well? Why did the, the disciples know when to act with the Grecians and all them? Because they had learned. When the moment's right, you act. But you can't act before. Chances are if Jesus would have came two hours earlier, she wouldn't have been there. He knew the right moment. And God knows the right moment for your, for you and your ministry, for you and your outreach, for your, the, your love. God knows the right moment for your victory. But right now, your job is to pray and to praise Him. So as we end this message today, I hope that I've helped you understand why it has not happened because the timing isn't right. 
Why are we still on Silverton Road? Renting a building? Time is not right. And I argue all that you want, 15 years of all that. You know what? That's water under the bridge for me. Because I'm waiting for the right moment. Because when the moment's right, there's nobody going to be able to stop that. But I, right now, have to learn to pray and to praise and to have patience on God. Prayer, praise, and patience. And we're going to seize the day. We're going to win the day. If you're here today and you know that you've been praying and you've been praising and you haven't seen it, and you're growing a little bit impatient, well, I've got a place for you to come. Because God sent a message of you to encourage you today. Hang in there. Don't stop now. Don't quit doing what you're doing. The day's going to come. That moment's going to come. Victory's going to come. Deliverance is going to come. Freedom's going to come. Salvation is going to come to your household. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's going to happen. It's going to happen just as sure as God is. Just as sure as His, as his Word is. It's going to happen. But right now, you've got to praise Him. Right now, you've got to pray. Right now, you've got to be waiting on Him and be patient with Him. And don't give in. And don't quit. And don't back down. Amen. And don't walk away. But keep praising Him. Keep, keep praying to Him. Keep being faithful to Him. And the day's going to come. The day's going to come. The day's going to come. Oh, somebody, would you join with me right now around this altar? Amen. Would you come praising him? Would you come praying? Would you come, amen, reminding God and reminding yourself, uh, we're going to wait on the Lord. The Lord knows what he's doing. I'm going to trust him. The Lord knows what he's doing. I'm going to keep trusting him. I'm not going to quit having faith. I'm not going to quit believing. I'm not going to give up. Amen. But just as sure as it happened in the Acts of the 11th chapter, it's going to happen here. Just as sure as it happened in Cornelius' household, it's going to happen in your household. Because God is not done yet. God's not finished yet. God is working. God is ministering. God is touching. Oh, would you reach out to him right now in prayer? Would you reach out to him right now and say, Lord, I just let you know I'm here still. Just let you know I still believe in you. Just let you know, Lord, that I still know that you're able, that you're able to touch him, that you're able to minister. Oh, Lord, in your name. That you're not done with Salem. You're not done with my family. You're not done, God, with my friends. Lord, but they're going to be saved. God, they're going to be touched by you. They're going to be renewed by you. Lord, my children, God, Lord, or the children, God, that have walked away, God, Lord, are going to return. God, Lord, when the moment's right, when the, when the, when the day is right, God, Lord, and I'm going to trust you today. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep praising you. Lord, even the moments when I don't feel like it, God, when all my world has falls apart, I'm going to praise you anyhow. I'm going to worship you anyhow. I'm going to magnify you anyhow. Oh, Lord, because we're going to win this day. We're going to win this day. We're going to win this day. We're going to see victory in this hour. We're going to see victory in this generation. We're going to see the glory of God revealed to this generation. We're going to see people walk out of sickness, walk out of depression. We're going to see people walk out of discouragement. We're going to see people walk out of sin, walk out of darkness into your marvelous light. Uh, Lord, because we're going to win this day because we're waiting on you, Lord. Our faith is in you. Our trust is in you today. Lord, our praise is towards you. Our prayer is turned towards you because we know that we're going to see the greatness of God revealed to this generation. We're going to win the day. We're going to win the day. We're going to win the day. We're going to win the day, God. We're going to win it by you. Not by might or by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We're going to win the day. We're going to win the day. Lord, your spirit's going to be revealed. Your glory is going to be manifest in the midst of this city again, God. Lord, in, the, in this in this in these neighborhoods again in these families again god for the greatness god of your glory and of your power and of your might god is going to be revealed again 
to these families, to this generation. God, Lord, that the children of this generation are going to see you as the loving Savior you are. Those that are hurting right now, those that are hurting right now, God, are going to witness your glory and grace and mercy. Those, God, Lord, right now, God, Lord, God, Lord, whose lives seem so tore up are going to find newness of life in you today, God. Lord, the day's coming, the moment's coming. God, Lord, the, the time of harvest is nigh upon us, God. Lord Jesus, and we're not going to give up. We're not going to we're not going to give up, God. We're not going to quit praying. We're not going to quit believing, God, but we're going to keep trusting in you today, Jesus. Reach over and pray with that one next to you right now. Encourage